you came into a film that was meant to have another star, mm -hmm. Julianne Moore. What happened between her leaving and, and you coming in? <laughs> All of that happened before I had anything huh. to do with the movie. So I came into a movie that had, you know, movies are like a miracle when they actually come mm. together. They fall apart a million times. You just say this, that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this particular movie had a different incarnation, which I wasn't a part of, which fell apart. And uh, Melissa McCarthy and I sort of made a pact when we came on board, like, let's never talk about whatever happened before, because clearly something happened. There's a reason it fell apart. Mm. We want to move forward with good feelings. We want to feel like we get to start fresh. So that was kind of where we, we came to the table with like, we love this story, we loved mm. this character. She was a character whose voice we felt like we didn't get to hear in movies very often. And um, it felt really important that we tell her story. So we were like, whatever happened before, gone. And how much did you feel compelled to follow the, the, the truth? She wrote a book about her experiences. How much did you feel you could fictionalize it? I'm in the process right now of making my third movie about real people. Huh. And it's always a tricky, it's always a tricky thing because you want to be true to the essence of the person mm. entirely. And you want to feel like if their loved ones saw the thing you're making, they would recognize that person within the movie. But you also have to be truthful to the narrative that you're telling and you have to find a way to make a compelling movie. So it's always a real balancing act between those things. In this scenario, she's no longer alive. She has no living relatives that we knew of. Um, so there was more of a sense of like wanting to do right by her. And, um, you know, she was a really prickly, difficult person mm. and we wanted to get that right. And we didn't want to soften her. And we felt mm. like she would almost be the most offended if we tried to make her really likable or something. Mm. Is her cat still alive? No. <laughs> <laughs> the baby cat. <laughs> that was an addition. Oh, it was? was she never addition. got a new cat? Mm. I think she did. But, um, yeah, things like that. You know, these yeah. are narrative devices we right. have to bring in to, like, great. let our yeah. audience feel a little yeah. bit better at the end <laughs> right. of the day. Do you all think of yourselves as writer-directors? Or is it possible to direct some really somebody else's script without you know, radically changing it. I don't know how to do the process if I don't at least, like, put some of it through my fingers, yeah. even if it's really in great shape, because the script I just worked on was in such great shape and the writers were so good and had been working on it for eight years. But I still had to, I still had to make parts of it mine, and just to know it inside and out the way you have to to direct something, yeah. like, it's so much harder to do if you haven't written it. It's like you have to put yourself inside the characters in some way and it's so hard to do if you was, have... Was Tom Hanks attached to the project? No, I brought it to him. Yeah? yeah. Tell, tell us that story. <laughs> okay, it's actually kind of a funny story. I That's wonder how it. he'll feel if, if I Sorry, told it. Sorry, we're taking over the... <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I wanted Tom, to know that too, I'm so. friends with Tom Hanks' son, Colin, and I was at Colin's kid's birthday party, and I was talking to Tom, and we'd met a few times, mm -hmm. And he was talking about this New York Times article about women directors. And I was like, yeah, I'm in that. <laughs> and he was like, wait, what? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I, I said this quote or something. I just, like, mentioned who I was. And then he went and watched my movie. And then we had a meeting. And then uh, we kept in touch. And I don't know, he kept up with me over the years. And was kind of like, what are you working on? What are you working on? And um, when the writers and everybody from the Mr. Rogers movie brought me the script and I got involved. You know, they all kind of said, our dream cast has always been Tom Hanks, but mm -hmm. um, we're pretty sure he doesn't really want to play real people anymore. He's played Walt Disney, he's played Sully. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he's kind of done this and we're hearing from his reps. Mm -hmm. He's probably not open. And I was like, I don't know, I kind of have a relationship with him, I'll send it to him. And like a week later he signed on and everyone was like, how did you do that? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think it was just luck of the draw, sort of. How do you explain what you do to your kids? My son's the kid of two directors, so oh. my husband's a director too, so he also is on set all the time. Mm. He, he was on set a lot for my Mr. Rogers movie and he would yell action and cut. And Sometimes the actors wouldn't have seen that he had kind of snuck in and sat on my chair, oh. but they would just hear <laughs> action like it was in like a three and a half year old's voice. Mm -hmm. And I've asked him, you know, what do you, what do you think I do? And he was like, you tell the people on the TV what to do and say. Or he said something like that. You know, he kind of understands, but really, I tell mm -hmm. him we just play pretend.
Thank you.